respecting the yell hack's name and having Yoran's men ridiculing him as he steps in. He remembers his grandfather's words and realizes there won't be no more disrespect as he stands up for the yell hack name with Lee Xion's help. He enters the meeting strong, humbling the cocky Taeyong, telling him if he smokes here, he'll be put six feet under. Chapter 20 In the dark times, Lee Seogak stood as king of Seoul, but after his failure to involve himself in politics, people under the drug tried to take a real hack to become the next best thing. A lot of blood spilt under the gudo. To avoid further more, Lee Seogak gave business rights into four pieces and acknowledging the bosses above them. Cha Yua tells Taeyong that whatever he did was stupid till Lee Sung Min enters himself, shuts Tai Yong himself. He doesn't hesitate, telling about Gyo Rang's assault on him, and neither does Ryu Tai Yong hesitate on admitting what he had done. It's natural he had a trick up his sleeve, and the trick is a photograph of Yil Hak with Tai Zong, connecting it with the assault on HK Loans and Gyo Rang's capital being ambushed, putting the blame on Yil Hak, claiming they struck first and looks to dismiss the meeting. It seems Bike already predicted all of Tai Yong's moves in trying to dismantle the committee. So all Sung Min must do is be the boss. That's exactly what he does, shutting the claims of and playing it cool. Chao Yua isn't having any of it and summons her assassin Bike Yong. Before things get out of control, Bike Dok Yong enters his team, surprising everyone, showing his support to Yil Hak appointing Lee Sung-min as chairman and promising to tear apart Gyo Rang and warning the other two, leaving his mark. Still, he steps out and meets a familiar face he didn't want to meet, Chief Jang. Chapter 21 Chief Jang has slowly started to be aware of Baik's resents as the tension between them keeps growing and growing. At Itaewon, Hyongu loans. Lee Hyongu, our beloved captain, Hook, is visited by Lee Xion to grab intel on the ground in Gyorang area. Naturally, he obliges under one condition. He wants to be part of Taizen. Gorang is full of activity, as the Gudo's finest, including Dokku, Yonggil, is held in captivity by Taeyang, who's here to break news of Taizan's new chairman, Yilhak's young master, Sung Min. Although Ryu Taehyung expresses how he isn't afraid of them, Dokku reminds him that Taesan has bike Dokyong. Chapter 22 With the help of Suma, Taesan locates the Gudo held in captivity. The plan is in play. Lee Xion Lim Gyeong, along with Lee Hyongu, infiltrate the abandoned warehouse while bike goes to Itawan motel and takes care of business by himself till eventually Choho joins in on the fun. The deadly alliance, clean house. Choho wasn't expecting Bike to be this devastating when dealing with a problem. It's not long till the two run into Gyo Chang, who admittedly says he escaped, but Bike suspects something's not right. Chapter 23 Bike's suspicions were true. Gyo Chang was manipulated by Chief Jang to betray Yil Hag so that they, the Gudo, may be spared and be appointed as the rightful hires to Yil Hag. Chang Ho, suspecting the same, takes Bike's place and tries to reason with Gyo Chang, but it's of no use, as he's hell bent on Chief Jang's pride. With no other choice left, Bike engages from behind and neutralizes Gyo Chang. Lin Yong takes care of things on his side and rescues Lee Somo, but Lee Xion won't have the same luck as he's ambushed instead by the assassin in disguise. Chapter 24 Lee Yong Gu also makes his way to prove himself to Tizen. He steps up to Jang Man Siok, using his Gyorang tag to enter without anyone getting hurt or suspecting anything. There he finds Doku. Yonggil and gets him out. Lee gets ready to fight the unknown assassin and gives him a definite tough time. Baik on the other hand 
hurries to the warehouse with Chong Ho and Gyo Chang as he suspects danger. Li Xuan continues putting the pressure, both dealing damage to one and other. But no matter how much the assassin cuts or bruises, he's not slowing down. Chapter 25 Lee So Wong and Dok Ku Yo Gil both help researching the others. They find Guang Pao, while Lim and Hyung Gu find Deok Bei, who's having trouble staying alive, and so will the rest seem like, as Ryo Tai Yong and Gyo Rang have made it to them. Lee Xion was always fierce with a knife, having done countless missions for Chief Jang. He learned one thing from his last mission no loose ends. He steps it up, injuring the assassin fully, almost ready to finish him, but before he could, it's deja vu for the assassin, as Li Xion will have to go and finish this some other time and regroup with Lim and the rest of the Gudo in trouble. Naturally, the Ghost Squadron leader blitzes his way, makes it to the Gyorang without a sound, and demonstrates his ruthlessness as he takes the head of the Gyorang himself. Shin binds the threads around Ti Hyong's neck and tightly clutches them, saying that his fist comes first as always, which is why this bad habit is going to get him killed. Ti Hyong angrily asks what this is, so he tells him to just consider himself unlucky that he was in a bad mood tonight. He tries to disarm him, so Shin turns around and kicks his knee from behind, remarking that he's a pretty feisty one and tells his lackeys to not move unless they want to get their boss killed. He calls to Parrot to get the wounded out of here so he quickly gets going, inwardly in awe over how Jio Rang's Ryu Tiyongs got subdued that easily, wondering where Tison got a guy like him from. Shin tells Tiyongs that people mostly say things like this in these situations and shouts out for people to make way or else he'll gut their boss like a pig. Suddenly, another guy slashes the threads from behind and attacks Shin who dodges in alarm before saying that he's got a lot of words for a poser. He easily dodges Shin's strikes, calling them predictable and slams his knee into his stomach before apologizing, confirming that was where he got shot and saying that it's a pleasure to meet him and that a lot of things make sense now if he's still alive. He asks if Tison's boss is Bikyasu, driving the dagger into Shin's hand and orders Tison to not move, remarking that his is how you use a hostage and that you can't just threaten others with their life, you have to make a show of it. As Ti Hyong's angrily watches, the man says he'd told him to not be so half-assed before and that he should leave no loose ends before Ti Hyong's rushes forward and kicks Shin in the face, asking the guy what he's babbling about before starting to land blows on Shin one after another. He asks Shin if he's the tout from earlier and tells him to try blocking this now before ordering him to keep talking like he was doing before and to keep pushing his luck as he agitatedly blocks his attacks. Shin quickly grabs hold of his arm, stopping another punch and slams him to the ground, driving his knee into his face before starting to choke him, as he says he still doesn't get it and drives the dagger through his left eye saying he made a show of it like he said and asking how it was. He tells the guy to make way if he understands or else he'll just kill him but he exasperatedly replies that he should just kill him since they don't need a useless punk like that anyway. He asks the other lackeys what they're doing and orders them to go in but they worriedly stay rooted to their places seeing which Shin remarks that it looks like they don't want to and that their chief doesn't understand gangsters at all. He remarks that from what he understands, the world of gangsters is different than that of the world of them soldiers. People don't become gangster bosses by just being strong. The one they believe in is the one who becomes their boss. If he wants to play with them gangsters, he shouldn't leave any loose ends and tells him that the rules on this side of the fence are different. The guy asks him if he thinks logic born from emotions can be called rules and that this is exactly why punks like them make a mess of everything inwardly saying that even if Ryu Tiyongs gets killed here, all they lose is control over Jio Rang and disbelievingly remarks how a bunch of thugs will stay loyal to their owner. He tells Shin that they'll leave Tiyongs and leave and that they'll play by their rules this time addressing Tiyongs and saying they'll talk later. Once they back off, Shin says he'll take out his eye for real later and tells Tiyongs to try not to die before then and disappears. Tiyongs angrily whirls around and starts cursing Tison before the guy says they must clear some things up which he agrees to as the two menacingly take out their daggers. As they leave, Ju Cheng and Diokbi emotionally decide to go to the young master for forgiveness. Meanwhile, the guy blows a smoke and tells Tiyongs that he isn't bad, one could even say that he's got some talent. 
Guangpo furiously curses Zhu Cheng and Diokbi for betraying Il 